It erases your memories, even takes away your very identity. There was a researcher in, in uh, Europe named Alzheimer, and this disease is named after him. It's called Alzheimer's. It steals your life while you're still alive. The good news, doctors now say the symptoms of this dreaded disease could actually be reversed and maybe even prevented altogether. Take a look. Just like a roof with dozens of holes can only work if they're all repaired, Alzheimer's has dozens of causes that must all be addressed. Most of them are lifestyle choices. Some of those choices we know are bad, like smoking and eating too much junk food. But others might surprise you, like eating too often or not getting certain vitamins and nutrients. Toxins from viruses and mold can cause Alzheimer's, too, and the list goes on. In his new book, The End of Alzheimer's Program, the first protocol to enhance cognition and reverse decline at any age, Dr. Dale Bredesen describes how to identify what risk factors you might have and how you can minimize them to prevent getting Alzheimer's or even reverse it. Well, CBN medical reporter Laurie Johnson is going to join us in just a minute. And Laurie, I want to ask you one thing that Dr. Um, Bredesen said, uh, the uh, CDC, who was setting the guidelines, uh, changed the protocol from low uh, starch and high fat or normal diet to low fat and high starch. and. He indicated that the number of people who have gotten diabetes has skyrocketed up to, what is 100 million people or so. Can you, can you talk about that? That was just a terrible move, uh, which basically, it was that, that food pyramid, which says the bottom of the pyramid, what we should be eating the most of are starchy foods like grains and bread. And since that time, we've seen obesity just skyrocket because that's absolutely the wrong thing that we should be eating the more of. And as you said, it's, it's led to uh, other things too, like an increase in heart disease, an increase in cancer, and an increase in Alzheimer's. Well, you know, I understand the public, they, they're looking for a pill. And Dr. Uh, uh, Bredesen said, I want to get a cure from this. But I, and they, they said, well, you've got to give us a pill. Well, he said, I can't give you a pill. It's a whole treatment. Can you tell us how his program works? Right. We've gotten spoiled here in the United States because oftentimes when we have a problem, a disease, a doctor gives you a pill and you take it and that's that. And unfortunately, the pills that we've had for Alzheimer's haven't worked. In fact, in many cases, they've made it worse, Pat. So unfortunately, there is no pill right now for Alzheimer's. Hopefully we'll get to that stage. But what the good news is we now know what causes it. This is a breakthrough. And here on the 700 Club, that by the grace of God, we've been able to prevent to to present cutting edge information to our viewers, and this is it. So I hope everybody's really paying attention. This is brand new stuff. We now know what causes Alzheimer's, and unfortunately, it's not one thing. It's not a very simple thing. This is a very comprehensive disease. So there are dozens of different causes, but they're all listed in that book. And so you can check yourself and say, hey, am I one? One of these people, one of the main causes, insulin resistance, which is often caused by obesity and diabetes and many other different causes. So when you know what causes Alzheimer's, you can stop doing those things to prevent getting it. But also we know that you can stop doing those things if you have, if you have <coughs> early stages of Alzheimer's and in some cases even late stages of Alzheimer's. All right. Well, Roy, well let's talk about you and I have talked so much about the gut flora. The, the gut is you know, like your fifth brain or something. I mean, it's, it, it is so important. And, and Dr. Bradison talks about that. What, what, is, what, what do we do to our guts? You know, let's talk about 
what Bradison says and how that may affect Alzheimer's. That is one of the keys. We talked about uh, insulin resistance. Another key to Alzheimer's, one of the main causes is um, having the wrong kind of bacteria in our gut and, and an unhealthy gut flora. There are so many different causes. We spent four days on this before. Uh, what causes a bad gut bi microbiome? What causes a good one? Uh, generally, you want to stay away from, again, you know, it all comes back to our diet, the junk food, too much sugar. And in the case of your gut, antibiotics can be a real problem too. Obviously, sometimes they, they are needed to save a life, but many times people take antibiotics and they're not needed and we want to put those good bacteria in there you know take a probiotic and eat those good probiotic and pre prebiotic um, foods. Um, you know, one of the main causes, Pat, though, of Alzheimer's disease is a genetic influence. So we know that m most people uh, have a 9% chance of getting Alzheimer's when they get older. But if you have an APOE4 gene, you have a 30% chance of having Alzheimer's. If you have two of the APOE4 genes, you have a 70% chance of having Alzheimer's. So you're more likely to get Alzheimer's than not. So this test, you know, if you have an Alzheimer's gene, again, something that we've talked about many times on this show, and you won't hear it on other stations, is a thing called epigenetics, which you brought to our viewers' attention a couple years ago. Epigenetics is brand new science that says even if you have a bad gene, you can turn it off. And that's what this Alzheimer's protocol does. So people who have one or both of the Alzheimer's genes should especially especially do this protocol because this could save them and keep them from getting the disease. Well, you know, the diabetes thing, I understand if we keep eating junk food and, and our body is trying to make insulin to control it before long, the adrenal glands get so exhausted, they can't put in any more insulin and therefore people have got to take shots or, or they, they go into uh, type two diabetes. Oh, talk about that. Well, insulin resistance comes from eating too much sugar or too many grains, you know, that processed, those processed grains like white flour. And what happens is it causes our body to produce too much insulin. So at one point, our cells are like, I can't take it anymore. Just think of it like this, as you have a child, a teenager who likes to listen to loud music and they always have the stereo on high, that when you finally turn it down, you can't hear the music. It becomes... It makes our cells resistant to insulin, which is important for our brain cells, especially for our brain cells. And so many of our brain cells become resistant to insulin, and that can lead to Alzheimer's, which is why we see so many more people with Alzheimer's now than we used to, because insulin resistance is so much more prevalent. So I re highly recommend people get the book. It's called The End of Alzheimer's Program, but also you can go to Dr. Bredesen's website, which is www.apollohealthco.com, www.apollohealthco.com, which explains the protocol and so many of these things people can do on their own just by reading the book, just being aware of the things that cause Alzheimer's. But again, if you have one one or two of the genes, you particularly need to do this. A lot of people up until now have said, I don't want to know if I have the gene. I don't want to know if I'm going to get Alzheimer's. But actually, the, these are the people who especially should know because it can be prevented. This is breakthrough, life-saving information, Pat. Well, thanks, Lori. Ladies and gentlemen, it's called The End of Alzheimer's. It's a program, the first protocol to enhance cognition and reverse decline at any age. It is an incredible thing. Um, you start reading it, and the next thing you know, your diet is changing dramatically. And he talked about some of the awful things that are in our food. You know, they give hormones to chickens and hormones to fish and hormones to pigs and you know, fatten them up. And so you take these hormones, and it, it destroys your life uh, because it's in our diet. So we have to be so very, very careful that we, we don't have all these toxins, and the water has toxins. You, re, you read about some of the water systems in some of these neighborhoods that, where the, the children have, have got lead poisoning. So, you need to eat and drink intentionally. <laughs> intentionally. Oh, man. Okay, well, the book is The End of Alzheimer's, and uh, who needs it? I mean, who needs Alzheimer's? I mean, it's horrible. It's like a living death. Mm -hmm. Terry? Well, coming up, a mom struggles to believe that her brain-injured son will ever be normal again. 
What song by Mercy Me sustains her? And how does her son exceed all expectations? It's a miracle you don't want to miss. And speaking of a song, this Grammy-winning music video has racked up more than 360 million YouTube views. Hillsong's Brooke and Scott Lidgertwood join us live later on today's 700 Club. We are only weeks from the election, and we're asking you to join with us in praying for our country. All you have to do to participate in this is to call our 1-800 number. It's 1-800-700-7000. Or if you prefer, you can go to PrayForAmerica.com. You can also text PRAY to 71777. And when you do, we're going to send you a Pray for America postcard. This isn't just a pretty postcard for you to put on your refrigerator. It's for you to send to a family member or a friend and invite them to pray as well so that we can get as many people praying for our country right now together. And there's also a 40-day devotional and a bumper sticker to put on your car to just be a reminder to other people that prayer changes things. So will you please join us in praying for America? Our goal is to cover our country in prayer, all 50 states in the days leading up to the election. So again, join with us, please. Just call 1-800-700-7000. You can also go to PrayForAmerica.com or text PRAY to 71777. In just a few minutes, we're going to be praying for our nation and for you. But first, here's Pat with an amazing story. Thanks, Terry. Life in a vegetative state. That's what doctors expected for Cole Burton after he was hit by a truck. Cole suffered severe brain shearing. His parents were devastated until they received a strange request. What did Cole want? You're about to find out. I came inside from doing some yard work and I got a phone call from a strange number and it was Cole's professor. And he said, Cole's been in an accident. He said, He's still breathing, but um, but it's bad. Charlie and Tina Burton will never forget the morning of May 24, 2018. At that moment, I was just frozen. I was just paralyzed, if you will. That day, as Cole and members of his geology class searched for rocks on the side of a highway, a truck careened out of control, striking Cole. The emotions that we felt, I think, were mainly just, just confusion and, and worry and, and hope that, that things would be okay. And we prayed before we, before we went and before we got on the road. Cole was life flighted to the UAB Medical Center. When the Burtons got there, they were devastated by the news. When the physician, along with the chaplain, came to speak to us, I knew that it was a grave situation. I knew that they were involved in a, a fight, if you will, a fight for Cole's life. He was already in a coma at the time that we saw him. We didn't realize that. But just as a mother, to see your child just laying there, you, you want to help them. Cole had suffered diffuse axonal injury, a condition similar to shaken baby syndrome. It's basically where a very fast start and stop and the brain continues to move inside the skull and it creates a shearing type injury. And so it's multiple injuries in multiple locations. The Burtons began contacting friends and family to pray for Cole. My prayers at that point were not audible, intelligible prayers. They were groans, they were grunts. So our daughter, Libba, she did create this Facebook page, Pray for Cole, just to keep people updated. And we felt the prayers of our church family, of our family, of our community. All Charlie and Tina could do was wait. Five days in, they told us, you know, that no meaningful recovery and that he would probably be in a vegetative state the rest of his life. I started imagining, okay, so 